Hi girls, welcome to this month's Activate Her Teaching. Look, here we are. Together. Together Whoop. again. So exciting. Yeah, so how happy to be here. And we are still in the book of Esther, mm -hmm. and we are still talking about I am who the great I am says I am. So each yep. month we've taken a topic, um, hashtag I am topic, and let's see if I can remember them all without looking. Um, we are uh, have done I am... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. We started with I am worthy. We did I am pure. Mm -hmm. I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. I am ready. Mm -hmm. I am standing and I am decisive. Mm -hmm. And this month, Good. we are going to talk about um, how important it is to be able to declare I am patient and how it was patience that was the key to Esther's defining moment. Yeah, that's right. This is a good Good teaching, and like we always say, we're always challenged in our teachings <laughs> with uh, the topic, so there's always a challenge to that. Um, but this is the defining moment for Esther. This is where we have reached that point where she's going to intervene now with the king um, on behalf of her people. And we realize that uh, intervention doesn't come without obstacles. and some of Esther's obstacles were the fact that according to law, anyone who approached the throne without being summoned by the king could be killed right there on the spot. Um, there were very few people who had permission or access to the king and could just march right in to see him. And um, I also discovered uh, that going through the proper channels for the queen to go and see the king would have meant that Esther actually had to go to Haman because Haman was his right-hand man. So that meant that Esther would have had to go to Haman, who had formed the plot to get rid of all of the Jewish mm -hmm. uh, people, and she would have had to explain to him, Haman, I understand that you've formed this plot, and I want to go talk to the king about it. <laughs> well, can you imagine? That wouldn't have gone very well. That wasn't really, that wouldn't work. No, that's not going to work. Um, and she also had not been summoned to the king's bedroom for 30 days. She had to question whether or not his desire for her had kind of cooled off a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. He was not, maybe he was now, uh, there was someone else that he was lusting after. And that very well could have been why she had been summoned. Um, and lastly, she was going to out herself as a Jew. Now it was going to be that the whole... Uh, kingdom was going to find out that she actually was a Jew. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about her, the steps that she took and what she did um, through the lens of the word. Good. Yeah. And so many, so many dynamics playing into that, um, this moment, you know, and, but um, the first thing that Esther did and, and the way, you know, she, the way that she exercised patience um, in a way that we could model yeah. in this dramatic situation, the first thing she did is that she paused and she listened to all the facts. Yeah. So um, she found out about this whole plot um, through conversations with Mordecai that happened through this uh, um, a messenger, really. So th information was going back and forth between Mordecai and Esther um, in this uh, fourth chapter of, um, of the book. And um, Mordecai is relaying to her all the details of the plan um, to destroy the Jews. But she was so wise in that um, she collected all the information. Yeah. You know, she took the time to listen to the explanation, yeah. to ask the questions, to gather all the information, to seek to understand the whole big picture um, before she did anything. Yeah. You know, and really that is like, that is the critical step. Uh, before we say or do anything um, to make sure that we have the facts straight. Which we sometimes fail mm -hmm. to follow that outline. I know I do that mm -hmm. so many times. Mm -hmm. um, so then the next step that she took was prayer. Mm -hmm. She decided then that the next, after she would gained all the facts and took that time to do that, she decided to call for prayer. Mm -hmm. She... Um, asked Mordecai to go and to pray. She told him, and you know what, something I realized is that that was a change in their relationship too because from up to that point, Esther had done everything that Mordecai had asked of her. That's what we read throughout oh, the chapters. Right. 
everything that Mordecai asked of Esther to do, he did. But then in this moment was another defining moment because now she's telling Mordecai, gather your, the people mm -hmm. and pray. And so now he was going to do what she had always done for him. She, he listened to what she was mm -hmm. requesting of him, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there was uh, three days of fasting and prayer. Three days. There was no rushing into it. There was... And it was a determined three days. You know, mm -hmm. she didn't say, give me about three days. She mm -hmm. said, give me three days. We're going to go to prayer and we're going to go to fasting. And I just finished reading the book of Jeremiah. And I saw a perfect example of how sometimes God takes his time in answering our prayers. And that's not something that I'm always comfortable with. But... Um, there was a story in Jeremiah where the uh, rulers, the, the leaders, went to Jeremiah and they asked him to pray for them. And he said he would because they wanted to know um, what to do and where to go. And he said, all right, I'll, I'll pray for you. And do you know that it was right there in Scripture, it says 10 days later, mm -hmm. God answered his prayer. And so a lot of times what we do is to put God on a time limit. And we say, I'm real quick, you know, like in passing, a situation hits and we go, oh, I better pray about that. And we pray and then we take off and we handle the situation. <laughs> we don't ever just right. wait it out and right. say, you know, well, I'm going to wait 10 days. That's not something. And so we have to remember that God's going to give us his answer, but it's going to be in his time. We have to stop trying to push God ahead. Um, and once Esther had made that three-day prayer determination, she let God orchestrate it then. Well, her decision to act through prayer and fasting, it actually energized her, mm -hmm. and it gave her her purpose, and it emboldened her. It, it made her brave enough to face that threatening and uncertain circumstance. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what the future was going to bring about after she went so I think, I just thought that was just so yeah. awesome. I know, and what strikes me that in this moment, here she is, she's energized, and like just you were talking about a second ago, she's energized, she's emboldened, she's, you know, she realizes her sense of purpose and in, in the, in the ramifications of it, um, but she didn't rush, like she didn't, she just showed patience, and she didn't rush into any decision, you know, and she allowed her course to be set through the fasting and the prayer and not the other way around, like you said, you know? And yeah. um, so in, um, after she, um, she instructed uh, Mordecai to gather the people together, they all fasted and prayed together. You know, mm -hmm. she brought around herself um, this group, the Jewish people, her people, to um, support her as community around her mm -hmm. and in this prayer and in this decision and in walking out this um, very important um, sequence of events that was about to take place. And there's just such great value in that, such yeah. great value in drawing others around us to pray with us. And um, like, I'm, I'm one who would, I would keep it more to myself, but mm -hmm. honestly, you know, when you go to other people and draw them in, it, it brings you to a place of humility. Yep. And um, it also brings you into a place of submission and accountability in the situation. Yep. Too. And um, and unity for the for all who are involved. Yep. And then also the other thing I thought about too is that the more people who are involved, the more God is glorified when He moves and does oh, what He does. Oh sure. You know. And so you know when it's just me and I see Him do what I've asked you know what I've asked Him to like orchestrate in my life. Um, you know then I'm grateful. But when I bring people in with me and and we all see God move, it's mm -hmm. like we all are. We can all see and and just um and be in awe of how he does what he does yeah you know? oh yeah for sure yeah so that's like the community the 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 bigger picture the co the community of the, like your church to mm -hmm. bring people in mm -hmm. but then yeah so she had mordecai do that go to all the land right mm -hmm. right the community yeah. but then she also went to her inner circle the those that were tight with her mm -hmm. her sure. group her core mm -hmm. and said you guys got to join me in on this. And so I, and I think mm -hmm. that we, there's a time to, to share it all mm -hmm. with the community. Right. 
Mm -hmm. And then there's that time too to bring in the inner circle, the core, those tight to you and um, and seek their counsel and seek their prayer, getting groups, mm -hmm. small groups of prayer, mm -hmm. you know, where you can Absolutely. really share what's going on. And then, mm -hmm. and it does the same thing, you know, there's a bigger picture that God um, uses to be glorified, but then too in that small group, when you're really laying it out there for those that you know are gonna seek the Lord on your mm -hmm. behalf, He's glorified too, mm -hmm. right? And you have to use discernment too. I mean, there are—I mean, there are just situations that you don't go to the whole community with, right? You know, absolutely. And, you know, and yep. so you have to use discernment, and it wouldn't, you know, bring honor to God to dishonor people, right? In the process, yeah. So absolutely, I that's a, a good thought. Absolutely, um, and you know, one thing about going to her court that the her people, her tribe, so to speak, <laughs> is. Um, you know, they walked with her through the whole, I think they must have um, set up the banquet. They must have all worked together to bring that piece to the puzzle, you know. Mm -hmm. But one thing I realized in this is that she she prepared that banquet before she went to the king. She had it all set. So that was a step of faith. Mm -hmm. I'm going to prepare a banquet. I'm going to invite them to this banquet. She didn't know actually yeah. in that moment if she'd live or die. Yeah, if she would even live to see the banquet. Right. <laughs> And so exactly. that was a step of faith. And sometimes mm -hmm. we have to step out before we see so the good. final outcome of it. You mm -hmm. know, I believe, God, that you're going to give me a victory. So we have to live in that place yeah. of, you know, looking, expecting for a victory. Absolutely. That's so good. That's so good. And so as she walked out her plan, God gave her the favor she needed. And, mm -hmm. um, and with the king in the moment that it was necessary. And that, in, in that process, God is setting up his next move. Yep. And um, so, so and we're in the story. And so banquet, the first banquet is all, is like, is done. She's, you know, she was able to go to the king and, um, ha and serve the banquet. And then, so that was over. But then what happened? Then the king has a restless night's sleep. And in that night when he can't sleep, he asked to have the books brought to him of his life, his history or whatever, you know, and he reads a story about a man who saved his life because he was so faithful and that man was Mordecai. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as God is orchestrating this bigger picture that we don't see often, he's moving. It's like, I always say it's like God's putting pieces of a puzzle together and we always try to jam a piece in to make it fit. Well, I always try to jam a piece <laughs> in to make it fit. But yet, if I let God just click it together, you know, then it's a the puzzle plays out in such a great, it, I mean, it just plays out so great to watch mm -hmm. it happen, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what happened. The king had a sleepless night. Um, Mordecai's faithfulness to him is revealed. And then he's like, oh, I got to honor this guy, you know? But then we ask ourselves, you know, what might have happened if Esther had not, waited mm -hmm. what might have happened if she didn't take the time to fast what could have happened if she said you know oh my gosh this is terrible i've got to run to the king well she didn't do that and in proverbs 15 1 it says a soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up stirs up anger and that's probably what would have happened had she just pushed her way in to the king in that moment when she's hit with the truth of what's going to happen if she didn't take the time to pray and fast, which, mm -hmm. you know, for many of us, our emotions click in and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, but we always think, we always run the risk of messing up God's perfect exactly. will when we don't stop to seek him first. Mm -hmm. And you've got a great story we were talking about last week that... Yeah, well, I have in my natural, I have a natural tendency to just when it comes to things, I'm not one who will just like rush off and run into something, but I do have a tendency to drag my feet, and especially when it comes to um, uncomfortable situations and um, trying to avoid them. So, so waiting usually isn't the hard part for me. It's actually moving and doing something when I feel like the Lord is pressing me to go, and um, to do and um, 
and so in that situation too, it's like you just to be able to sense the Lord's leading and mm -hmm. wait on the timing of it all. Um, it, was, it was not too long ago that um, I was at a crossroads in a relationship uh, with a family member. And this uh, had been years and years of um, trying to make it work with this person and um, feeling like I could never get it right and I couldn't measure up. There was just no way to please her. And, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't just me either. It was the, my, my siblings found the same thing to be true. And we tried and we tried, you know, and we, we probably didn't do it all perfect. You know, we probably weren't um, perfect in it, but we certainly made attempts to make yeah. it work. And um, I will vouch for you. <laughs> they did. <laughs> so and the, so at this point, like the main reason for trying to make it work was no longer a consideration. So, the, you know, we had worked at it for certain reasons. And and then so this that was, you know, kind of life had gone along and, that you know, we didn't really feel like we had to make it work anymore. Um, but to be authentic with myself and to be authentic with the Lord, I couldn't just let it be. I felt like I had to, you know, I had to address it. I had to address the person and tell her where I was at and be direct about it and be honest and, um, and then go from there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, did, I really wanted the relationship to continue. I mean, my goal was to, to, was to save the relationship, but I didn't want it on the same terms that it had been for all those years. So because it hadn't been healthy for me. And at the same time, I'm just letting her mistreat me. Right. And that's, right. Not, that's not good. That's right. not honoring to me. It's not honoring. It wasn't honoring to my siblings either. So, and it just ate at me constantly. I couldn't, I mean, talk about like, there's this, you know, like the word disease. Well, I, you break that down into dis-ease and it's like, you know, I, it was having an effect on me. I yeah. was in such dis-ease that it was like eating me alive, you know? So, um, I just got to the point with the Lord. It's like either you got to help me here, or you got to help me put it away. You right. know, I got to. I can't stay here anymore. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know quite how to handle it. I didn't know how I was going to deal with the situation. But we talked about it numerous times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> numerous prayed about time, it. Prayed about mm -hmm. it. Um, I know you prayed for me um, when, when you know, in your own prayer time, apart from our times together. And mm -hmm. and um, my pastor and his wife were. Um, people that I had confided in and just asked to pray for me during mm -hmm. this time too. And um, um, I had run things by my brothers and sisters too, to make sure it's like, you know, am I, do I have this situation? Like, it is, is it right in my head or am I like reading this wrong or, you know, so I was looking for some um, further perspective because mm -hmm. um, I, if I was wrong, I wanted to know, right. you know, if there were things I was doing or things I wasn't doing that I should have been, you know, then tell me. Um, but, um, you know, time went by and, you know, as a praying and I'm trying, I still can't let it be and just didn't really know how to handle it. And a month or so later, um, one night I woke up in the middle of the night, it was like three in the morning and all of a sudden it was just like everything I needed to say. Mm -hmm was right there and I got out of my bed and, and I sat on the floor and I typed it out in a letter. Mm -hmm. the, it, they were just, the thoughts were so clear and concise and um, and I just kind of wrapped it in as much grace as I could and as much love as I could, but I acknowledged from my perspective where we'd been, um, the two in our relationship and where I felt like we were now and, um, and I asked for a new beginning on new terms. Mm -hmm. And um, that was several months ago, and I haven't heard a thing. You know, there hasn't been any answer. There hasn't been any contact at all. And you know, maybe someday there will. And uh, but um, I have such a sense of re release now um, from any responsibility. I feel like the Lord's released me from responsibility because I I feel like I did what I needed to do and. And I just believe that he just has brought me some freedom in that, and I think he's brought freedom to the to my to my sisters and and um, and uh, brothers to to a certain extent. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I just and I feel like it's something that if I you know, I could have just made the decision to tell her how I feel, right, and why she should feel the way you know she should feel bad about the way she treated me, and you know I I. I feel pretty justified in where I stand, yeah. and um, and um, but um, 
Well, I think the thing is, you know, so when we, because there's no doubt, I mean, you were mistreated. Mm -hmm. And and I think that so often it's that, you know, the harsh word stirs up so much. Mm -hmm. And there was already all that stirred up, mm -hmm. even though there hadn't been harsh words. But if you had just pushed ahead and in anger mm -hmm. and frustration because there was so much of, there's, there's hurt and, you know, there's so many layers mm -hmm. and levels of emotions from years mm -hmm. from I mean it's, it's like years that we go through things mm -hmm. and we have these you know kind of breaks in our relationships and whatnot and and we can either push ahead and we can do it in, on our terms mm -hmm. and because we are justified or we can do what you did and it's just like you know wait it out wait it out Wait it out. I mean, I, I'm just like so impressed with her ability to wait it out, wait it out. I've been, I, I'm thinking, I'd have written that letter like a long time ago. <laughs> I may have written some that I didn't send. But, but Steve didn't send process. it, you know. I would have tossed them. Maybe yeah. all three of them I wrote, boom, boom, boom. She'd have gotten yeah. bombarded with them, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something when you when we see in, in one another, um, I think that it can be really easy when you see somebody pausing and waiting to try to push them, mm -hmm. try to push them along and say, you should write that, you should do that, you should do that, you should do that. And I just, listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, gosh, I hope I didn't ever do that and question your pause. Because I think sometimes we do that with one another. Mm -hmm. We question a pause and, and don't allow it to... Um, be that pause of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we have to, um, what we should start doing is saying, you know what, I'm taking a pause of prayer right now. That's good. That's good. And phrase. that's a good phrase. We should. Yeah, yeah. I think it must be a God thing because I just was, I'm just really yeah, thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's a pause of prayer mm -hmm. that we say, okay, I'm, I'm in a pause of prayer right now. And we can ask one another, how's your pause of prayer going? Mm -hmm. But not push each other out of that pause of prayer because we feel right like we know what you should do yeah we just join you we just need to join each other you know if you're if you're in a pause of prayer over a matter my job is to come under you and pray for you in that and that the Lord speak clearly to you and that the Lord will give you the right time and the right course you know just you know same as Esther you know that's yep, what exactly. she that's what she was seeking in that in that through those three days is exactly. the right course and the right um you know just the right steps to take and the right words to use you know and and um and you know and in my situation it's it's that i just explained it's like you know the freedom came the freedom came because i feel like because the lord gave me the words and if yeah. i it, it, so i don't live with like regret that I said things I shouldn't have said because I felt like the words were of the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and that's the only way they can be wrapped in the grace and the love that I felt like that they were able to be spoken in. And yep. um, and so, um, and, but then, and then the next step is the freedom that comes from yep. from being in that place. And, and, uh, and it doesn't mean that it's going to turn out the way you expect or yep. think that's when you really have to take that pause of prayer. Then you walk into the obedient, I'm going to walk out in obedience mm -hmm. to what God's calling me to do, but then I'm going to let it go and I'm going mm -hmm. to trust God. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take a break mm -hmm. and we want you in your, in your groups, we want you to share a story. Think of a moment when you waited on God, when you had that pause of prayer and you saw God move in a way that you cannot, you still are like in awe of it. Or... Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a story where you didn't wait. There was no pause of prayer. There was an emotional response and a reaction, and you didn't wait. You didn't take that time, and then you needed God to come in and do some cleanup. Talk about that, too. What can we learn from one another in, in these um, as we learn how to be hashtag I am patient? And we'll meet you back here.
Welcome back, girls. Hope it was a good discussion. So what about those times when yeah. patience is not what we're coming up with, but it's when we allow the impatience to kind of take over? Let's talk about that just for a minute. Yeah, let's uh, talk about some of the ways that I know personally I have allowed uh, several of these options to set my course when I'm confronted by a troubling situation. So maybe some of you can relate. Um, I would say one of them is fear. Um, I see something troubling happening and I cry, um, I get anxious, and usually that means I snap at people around me. I <laughs> kind of take my <laughs> frustrations out on Pat a good many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anger can kind of creep in there. Yeah. Um, and it's like, and when we move on that, it's like, it's kind of like once you let it, that first couple words out, I mean, the rest just come storming yep, out, it's like, don't blah. they? <laughs> they do. We just end up taking it out on other people. Yep. Yep. Uh, sometimes people enter into this place of denial and they, they just refuse to look at it. They mm -hmm. pretend it's not there. There is no big, uh, bigger, bigger picture. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. happening. All is well. I'm going to pretend I don't see this right now. I'm good at that one. That's one. That's definitely one that I, then one of my tactics for dealing with this, a situation that's troubling me. And um, or I just say, okay, I can't deal that right now. I just can't deal with it right now. Um, I don't have time to deal with it. So or just to e or even make light of it. You know, kind of joke, kind of laugh it off and mm -hmm. say it's really no big deal. You know, I wish I knew what that was like because usually in a troubling situation, I dwell on it until it just consumes me. And it, you know, I wish sometimes I wish I understood how people could just not think about it because <laughs> that's definitely not me. Um, I'm more of a control freak. I try to control the situation. Maybe I, um, I talk about it a lot, you know, and and that oftentimes can just bring over. Uh, I sway me right into. Uh, place of sin because I'm gossiping mm -hmm. and I'm confronting something um, with another person in not the best of ways, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I think anytime, like it, really any of those situations, it's all based on emotion and we, we respond out of emotion yep. instead of, um, you know, taking the time to patiently work it out yep. or, or allow God to help us work it out. Um, it's, you know, we get ourselves in trouble. So I think one of the things we have to stop and look at then is is the prayer pause. We have to make sure that we're taking that that time to pause, that time to pray. But I think there's also another aspect that we can talk about in these last few minutes together, and that's the fasting aspect. You know, that's what Esther had Mordecai, everybody around them, they were they were fasting. I think that that's something that we've walked away from, gotten away from mm -hmm. today. So what does fasting bring to our relationship with God? So yeah, so Esther did, she added another layer to the prayer and, and that is the fasting and, and, um, and we can do the same thing. And fasting is actually, it's, it's a spiritual discipline mm -hmm. that God um, established so that we could achieve breakthrough and um, open up the opportunity for him to, uh, for us to be more attuned into him and his leading. Um, it's just, it, it's a deliberate decision to abstain from, it could be food, mm -hmm. or um, some kind of food, or um, could be a social media fast, Yep. could be, um, you could fast from electronics. It's just a deliberate decision to remove some of the distractions and some of the things in your life um, to um, open up that opportunity for that prayer pause. And um, and it's, and with food too, it's like it's it's an opportunity just to um, to discipline your flesh. Yeah. Too. So yeah. it's and it's so and it's very advantageous to be able to do that, you know, and yep. just to know that you can do that. And um, and uh, but um, and it's sacrificial. I mean, we're sacrificing. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And there are several reasons that God might call us to a fast. Um, and Jesus actually explains in Matthew 17, 21, that there are certain situations that can't be resolved without prayer and fasting. So it's, uh, even Jesus found it to be a critical, uh, right. critical tool, critical discipline um, in his spiritual life. Yeah. Um, it also strengthens the spirit. If you read in Luke 4, 
14 through 18, you'll discover how and why. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a spirit strengthening tool. Yeah, and and it's also an opportunity to receive God's counsel. And how bad do we need God's counsel these days? You know, we have all sorts of counsel sure. available to us. Sure. <laughs> but yep. um, it's really a perfect way to see what God thinks about a situation. Yep. And if you read in Judges 20, 26 through 28, you'll see that it releases direction for mm -hmm. decisions. Yeah. And there's nothing, um, there's nothing like um, using this um, discipline to be to bring you to a place of um, repentance. Oh yeah. Um, as you just look, you know, um, as you're you're before the Lord, and He just has a as a way of bringing you to that to your knees. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because in that place of repentance, you can get there because pride or fasting really does. Uh, break pride and humility. Mm -hmm. Look at Psalm thirty-five, thirteen. You know, it's a, it is a good. It's really just a good way to break you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, yeah. more of him and less of us, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it releases strategy. We've talked about that and breakthrough. Um, yeah. And Ezra eight um, is a good, uh, ref a good example of that. Uh, as he's as Ezra is leading the people back to Jer uh, Jerusalem, he declares a fast to do that, to actually do that, to bring humility to the group mm -hmm. and to petition the Lord for safety and um, to handle the different situations and circumstances that are playing into this whole um, process. So, and then in verse 31, it says the hand of God was on us and he protected them and, and they made it, they made it back to Jerusalem. Yeah. <clears throat> it also releases the manifold wisdom of God, which it, we found that in the um, Esther anointing book by Michelle McLean Waters. Waters. Okay. And she's Walters? Walters. Walters. Mm -hmm. She speaks of it releasing the manifold wisdom of God. And I looked up the word manifold, and it actually means um, variety and diverse. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's just so cool because God is diverse. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a variety in his wisdom. It's not like we think this just a <laughs> one way, you know, but God is mm -hmm. so fluid and, mm -hmm. and he's always moving. And so it is true that when we think we've messed it up, God's got another way, mm -hmm. you know, he's got more wisdom. Oh, okay. Well, they messed it up this mm -hmm. time. I'm going to go that way. You know, mm -hmm. you go left, I'll go right kind of yeah. thing, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I, I loved learning that, that uh, manifold means diverse. That's really good. That's a, yeah, that's a good word to dig into sometime. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the other thing I think it does, and it's, this is what it did for me, it is it brought release. Um, uh, the prayer and the fasting and the waiting brought release for me. Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Free those who have wrongly who are wrongly imprisoned, lighten the burden of those who work for you, let the oppressed go free, and remove the chains that bind people. So there's just release, yep. you know. Yeah, for sure. Through, through fasting and prayer and being patient. Yep, yep. And, you know, in Jeremiah's day, the Lord became angry over those who were speaking for him, but were not willing to listen to him. And fasting gets us to that place where God... I mean, we talked about the wisdom. We talked about all the things that the fasting does for it for us in our relationship with Him. But it also and and um, powers God and gives Him the ability to direct us, to give us that direction, to hear so intimately and close mm -hmm. closely to Him. You know, I really find that um, He speaks so much clearer when I have set things aside. You know, and I'm willing to get in, uh, mm -hmm. get in that place where I listen to him. And in Jeremiah's day, God really spoke and said, I am angry. Mm -hmm. I'm angry that people are speaking for me, but they're not really listening to me. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Whoa. yeah. It was, um, he said, uh, he said, I have given them no message, yet they go on prophesying. And so that when I read that, I, I was like kind of undone thinking, if I really want to speak for God, then I really need to take the time to listen to what he's saying and what better way than to sacrifice my own comfort 
-hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. come before him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in the last little bit, we've walked through Esther's moments of ultimate influence. <laughs> and, yeah. and if we want to have the same influence in the lives of the people around us, um, we need to follow her example of patience. And um, <clears throat> we want to be able to say, hashtag, I am patient in those critical moments, right? Definitely. Um, and, uh, and then if, if we're going to do that, then we have a responsibility to prayer, those prayer pauses and, and times of fasting. Um, so that we can, so that we do know, so that we do know we're walking yeah. in, in no step with Him, and we're not um, saying we are, and we're, but we're really not. So. And what a great way to glorify the Lord in the midst of these days, when people can see us pausing mm -hmm. and not reacting and praying and not just speaking out of our own. Thoughts. Need and out of our need to be heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So let's just talk about the activation plan then, um, as we leave our meetings today, and and what are some of the ways that we can um, implement some of these things we've been talking about. Um, and um, one of the things that we really um, would like you to consider is is your prayer life and and um, what that looks like, and and um, have you carved out time for prayer and. Um, you found a cool devotion. Yeah, but when I was reading my devotion one day, and he, the Nicky Gumbel, who wrote it, he he quoted this man Lancelot Andrews, and he said that he was one of the greatest theologians and preachers of his day. And after he died, his private notebook on prayer was discovered and published. In it, he had written two lists. Now, I just love this. First, he wrote a list of times of prayer in the Bible. Always, without ceasing, at all times, three times a day, evening and morning and at noon, seven times a day, in the morning, a great while before day, at daybreak, the third hour of the day, about, six, about the sixth hour, the hour of prayer, the ninth, by the evening, by night, and at midnight. <laughs> Excuse me. And then next, he wrote a list of places of prayer listed in the Bible. In the assembly and in the congregation, your closet, an upper room, a housetop, the temple, on the shore, in the garden, on their beds, a desert place, in every place. <laughs> Isn't that? There is no limit to the times, places, and different ways in which we can pray. Amen. Isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> that is good. That is really good. So, you know. And what better way to uh, build that patience inside each one of us so that we actually honestly can declare hashtag I am patient by learning now in this season how to set aside time to pray in all always mm -hmm. without ceasing at and all times. everywhere and everywhere <laughs> everywhere you go amen <laughs> <laughs>